recent years, and it plays a vital role in the global transition to cleaner energy. From small-scale installations on rooftops to large solar farms, uh, farms that can power entire cities, we, we saw that solar PV is growing in technology. So hopefully, by the end of this session, you'll have a clear understanding of how solar PV works, its benefits, and the challenges associated with it. So here's a quick overview of today's content. So we'll start with a quick introduction, and then we'll talk about solar PV systems and solar PV panels. Then, of course, we'll explore key, key statistics around solar PV growth and adoption globally. And then we will wrap up in a conclusion, followed by a quick exercise to just uh, quicken up our memory. And finally, we will have a Q&A session where you can, um, you can uh, ask any questions that you may have. So let's start with the introduction. So what is solar PV technology? So solar PV technology converts sunlight directly into electricity using semiconductor materials. So this is the same type of technology used in everything from calculators to large solar panels. It has become one of the most reliable and clean renewable energy sources available today. So solar PV helps us significantly reduce our dependence on fossil fuels, playing a, a crucial role in the transition to cleaner energy. So solar PV systems, one of the main, main advantages is that they're scalable. So we can install it from roof, small rooftop installations or to large solar farms that can power entire communities. So this is important because it's not very, um, it's not always that a renewable energy source can be used in small scale and also big scale. Some need to be utilized in bigger scales, but with, with solar energy, essentially you can do both, which is one of the great things about this technology. So let's talk about the historical context. So what, what happened to, I mean, when did we actually discover this solar power uh, or solar PV technology? Well, the photovoltaic effect was first demonstrated uh, by a French physicist known uh, as Edmond. Uh, he has discovered this technology. In 1934, the first practical solar cell was developed by Bell Labs, achieving around 6% efficiency. So this was a pivotal moment in solar energy technology. Then in the 1970s, we had the oil crisis, which spurred a new wave of research into alternative energy sources, leading to the early commercialization of solar PV technology. So this crisis pushed the need for reliable and renewable energy sources like solar. From 2000 to the present, we've seen dramatic advancements in solar efficiency, along with, so, so along with significant cost reductions. So these improvements have made solar PV a mainstream energy technology, accessible and practical on a global scale. All right, so with that out of the way, how does solar PV actually work? So as we say, solar panels are made of photovoltaic cells, typically composed of semiconductor materials like silicon, for example. When the, su when the sunlight hits the solar cell, it excites electrons, creating an electric current. This process is known as the photovoltaic effect. So the key steps are, first, the absorption of sunlight. So the photons from the sunlight strike the solar panel, releasing electrons. The excited electrons move through the cell, generating direct current uh, electricity, which is also known as DC electricity. Then to convert it to usable power, an inverter converts the DC electricity into alternating current, which is AC, which can be used in homes and businesses, of course. So excuse the title. So why is solar power important today? No wind. We talked about that in our previous lecture. All right. So solar PV produces uh, no greenhouse gas, you know, during the process, as we're just directly taking energy from the sun and we're using it, which means that it's a clean energy. Moreover, it provides a sustainable renewable energy that can reduce the reliance on fossil fuels. We've, we've kept uh, talking about how, you know, fossil fuels are running out and they're not good for the environment. So we need to find different sources to support our energy independence. And lastly, we talked about the scalability where solar panels can be installed on the rooftops, commercial buildings, and in utility scale solar farms. All right, so now let's talk about solar PV systems. So we have uh, four types actually of solar PV systems. The first one is the grid type PV system. Then we have the off type PV systems. Then we have the hybrid PV systems. And finally, we have the building integrated PV systems. Fear not, we'll be tackling one by one each of these technologies. So let's start with the first technology, 
the grid tied PV systems. So these systems are connected to the public electricity grid as shown here in the picture. Any excess electricity generated by the solar panels can be sent to the grid. And when the panels don't produce enough energy, for example, at night, the power is drawn from the grid. So we're basically storing it directly in the grid. And let's say at the night time, when we don't have enough energy, we can utilize that energy. The most common type of solar system for residential and commercial use. So most of the grid type PV systems are used for residential and commercial applications. And it's also often paired with net metering, allowing homeowners to earn credits for excess energy sent to the grid. So this is something, uh, an advantage basically of the system. So let's take a clear look at the picture. As you can see here, the solar panels are placed on the top, uh, uh, are placed on top of the you know house, and they're connected directly to the public electricity grid. So when the solar panels generate more energy than needed, the excess energy will be sent back to the grid where the homeowners can earn credits through net metering. So if the solar panels are not producing enough electricity, such as at night or during cloudy weather, the system draws power from the grid. So this type of system is very useful uh, for residential and commercial applications. Let's talk about the advantages of the system. So the first advantage is that there's no need for expensive batteries as it's, connect, as it's directly connected to the grid. And it also maximizes, maximizes the solar usage while relying on the grid for backup. As for the challenges, even though it's connected to the grid, this means that there is grid dependency. So if the grid goes down, your solar system also shuts down unless it's paired with the battery backup and net metering limitations, which are policies vary by location and some regions may not offer favorable compensation for excess energy sent to the grid. So this of course depends on your location. The next system is the off-grid PV system. So these systems are completely independent of the grid and require batteries to store the electricity generated by the solar panels. So we have a battery bank in between typically used in remote areas where the grid access is unavailable or unreliable. So this is uh, good because sometimes you cannot depend fully on the grid. It requires careful sizing of both the solar panels and the battery storage to ensure continuous power, because you need to ensure that you have the correct battery amount. For example, if you're producing too much energy and the battery is not able to store this energy, then uh, of course there'll be energy wasted. So it's important to carefully size the system. So this is just a clear uh, picture. So what happens is that the sunlight captures, uh, the solar panel captures the sunlight and converts it to electricity. The electricity flows through an inverter, which converts the DC produced by the panels into AC current, which is alternating current. And then it's usable by household appliances. Then any excess e electricity is stored in the battery bank for use when the sun isn't shining, ensuring a constant power supply. So off-grid off systems are actually ideal for remote areas, as we said, and the areas where you cannot access the grid easily. As for their advantages, so we say that it offers complete energy independence as we're not relying on the grid. And another advantage is that it's very good for rural areas, cabins, or places with no access to the electricity grid. As for the challenges, it might be expensive because there is a need for batteries and batteries are not cheap. You can also, you must also store enough energy to cover low sunlight periods. So you need to have more batteries essentially to be able to cover more energy so that when there's no sunlight, you're able to use that energy for a longer period of time. Moving on to the third system, we have the hybrid PV systems. So these systems combine solar panels with battery storage, but they remain connected to the grid as backup. So it's basically combining the first and the second system. Uh, where we have battery and also we have the grid. The excess energy can either be stored in batteries or sent to the grid, as I said, depending on the system design. It also provides energy security by combining the benefits of both grid tied and off-grid systems. So this system is basically combining both advantages of the previously uh, seen systems. During power outages, the system can rely on battery storage for backup power. So this is uh, a very good advantage of the system. So as we said, it consists of both uh, a battery system and a utility grid system. So it's the same like the previous systems where uh, the first one con was connected to the grid only, the second one was connected to batteries only. This one, we connected to both the grid and also the batteries. So this is an advantage of this hybrid PV system. 
So as we said, the advantages, it provides backup power during grid outages. So when the grid is out, you can always rely on the batteries. It also allows excess energy to be stored or sent to the grid, offering flexibility. So you can even gain compensation if you want, and the remaining you can send it to the batteries. So the challenge is that, of course, there's a higher cost because you have to add batteries compared to the grid type systems. It is also complex because the system design now is more complex because you are because you are in you're integrating both battery storage and grid connectivity. So this needs to be taken into account. And uh, there's also a limited battery lifespan where batteries degrade over time and need to be replaced. So this is adding more long term costs. Solar PV panels uh, and the last system is the building integrated PV system. So. Solar PV panels are directly integrated into building materials, such as roofs, walls, or windows. So we don't put panels, but rather the roof itself is integrated with the panel. Uh, it seems they integrate solar energy into building design. So this is a very clever uh, idea to just use material that's able to capture energy from the sun directly. It is common in more than eco-friendly or energy efficient buildings. Um, so here we have a closer look. So you can see how the system is connected. So the solar panels or the roof that is made of the solar panels generates electricity. Um, the charge control regulates the flow of power. The excess power is stored in a battery bank and then an inverter will convert the DC power to AC which can be used in the building, for example. So the advantages is that it blends seamlessly into the building design. So reducing the need for separate panel installations, as we say that the building itself will be made of these panels. It can also save on materials and labor for both the energy generation and construction. As for the challenges, there's a higher initial cost, of course, because they tend to be more expensive than the normal PV systems because of the specialized materials that are needed and the specialized installation process. Uh, they also have lower efficiency because uh, due to the less optimal placement or angles, because when you place the solar panels yourself. You can place them in the correct angle that you'd like, but if the building is made of these materials, then of course that would depend on the location of the building itself. Uh, there's also limited retrofitting because this is uh, good for new constructions, but if you want to retrofit a PIPV into uh, an existing building, it can be very complex and costly. So usually if you'd like to opt for this system, it's when you are constructing the building, not after you've constructed the building because then it will be very difficult to you know, re, re, you know, reconstruct uh, the building materials with the solar PV system. All right, so with that, we'll be talking about the different solar PV panels because the efficiency of the sunlight being captured depends heavily on the solar PV panels. And we can see that it's improving day by day. So let us look at the type of panels that are available. So the first one is the monocrystalline panels. So they're made from single crystal silicon Monocrystalline panels are highly efficient because the structure allows for easy and electron flow, generating more electricity per square foot. Uh, so as we say, the advantages first is highly efficient. So typically it's the most efficient type of solar panel, converting more sunlight into electricity than the other types. It's also very space efficient, which means that it requires less space to produce the same amount of power compared to other types. It also has a long lifespan, which means that these panels generally really last longer uh, and come with warranties of up to 25 years or even more. As for their challenges, so even though they're very efficient, uh, they're, this means that they're more expensive. So monocrystalline panels are more expensive due to the intricate manufacturing process. Uh, they're also, they're, while they're efficient, the monocrystalline, the monocrystalline panels can experience significant drops in efficiency if a portion of the panel is shaded. So you need to ensure that the panel is not being blocked by the sunlight and it's being uh, exposed uh, you know, to the energy, to the sunlight energy directly. Then we have polycrystalline panels. Uh, so these are made from multiple silicon crystals melted together. Polycrystalline panels are less efficient than the monocrystalline panels, but they're more affordable. So this is a more affordable option. So as we say, the advantage is that it has lower costs. So the simpler manufacturing process makes the polycrystalline panels more affordable than the monocrystalline panels. Uh, they're also durable. So these panels are still reliable and offer good performance for most residential and commercial installations. So because they're cheaper, it's, it makes more sense to build them 
if uh, you are living in your house, for example. Then uh, as for the challenges, so we said they have lower efficiency and there's also an issue of temperature sensitivity. So their performance drops more in high temperature environment compared to the monocrystalline panels. So maybe these panels would be more suited in, uh, in an area which is not very hot, for example. So this is something also to take note of. Then we have thin film panels. So thin film panels are made from layers of photovoltaic materials, such as cadmium telluride or amorphous silica, deposited onto a substrate like glass or plastic, as you can see from the image. So the first advantage is that they're very flexible. So thin film panels can be flexible, making them suitable for a variety of applications. So including curved surfaces and portable solar devices. So some rooftops might be curved, and this is where uh, this thin film panel would make sense. They're also very lightweight. So these panels are lighter than the traditional silicon-based panels, making them easier to transport and install. Uh, also their performance in low light is good. So they perform relatively better in low light conditions such as cloudy days or partial shading. So, you know, these are, um, depending on the location, these might be the best suited panel. Uh, however, of course, there are also challenges. So they are less efficient than both monocrystalline and polycrystalline panels. So they require more space for the same energy output. They also have a shorter lifespan because, uh, yeah, they are thin and they're flexible, which means that they're usually having shorter warranties and lifespans than the other panels. And their degradation rate uh, is, grows faster over time. So this is one of the reasons why they don't last very long. Then we also have another type of panel, which is the bifacial panel. So bifacial panels can generate electricity from both sides. Uh, so usually, Usually it's, uh, so far the panels we talked about are one-sided while the rest are both sides. Uh, so this captures reflected light from the ground on other surfaces. All right. So the advantages are, the advantages are by capturing sunlight from both sides, bioinflation panels can generate up to 30 more percent energy compared to traditional panels. They are often more durable as both sides of the panel are exposed and made from high quality materials like glass. However, there are also an issue of higher costs as the challenges because bifacial are more expensive than the traditional monofacial panels due to their advanced design and materials because right now we need to consider from both sides, uh, capturing energy from both sides, which is why the manufacturing process for this bifacial panels will be more expensive. As for the installation considerations, they require specific installation setups, so tilted or raised installations to maximize energy capture from the rear side. All right, so we talked a lot about the, the different types of PV panels. L let me just summarize it quickly. So the monocrystalline panels, these are the most efficient one. So they offer high efficiency, but they also come at a higher cost. The polycrystalline panels, they are a more affordable option but they require more space and are less efficient than the monocrystalline panels, for example. Then we have the thin film panels, which are flexible and lightweight, but have lower efficiency and shorter lifespans. Lastly, we have the bifacial panels, which can increase energy output, but they need specific installation and are more expensive. And typically these ones will be used in cases where uh, electricity can be, or sunlight can be captured from both sides. So special cases. All right. So now let's talk about some of the statistics of the solar PV technology. So in 2023, solar PV contributed to three quarters of global renewable capacity additions. Over the next five years, solar PV and wind will make up 96% of all renewable capacity additions, driven by their lower generation costs compared to the fossil and non-fossil alternatives, and especially with the continued policy support. Solar PV and wind capacity additions are expected to reach more, more than double by 2028 compared to 2022, reaching a total of almost 710 gigawatts, continuously setting new records. So this is the diagram that talks uh, about the renewable energy capacity additions by technology and segment from 2016 to 2018. 
So we can see that there's a huge increase in renewable energy capacity with the boost of technologies uh, in solar and uh, wind particularly. This shows that how renewable energy capacity is set to grow significantly in the coming years. And this is why it's important to start investing in these technologies. But let's talk specifically about some country and the regional highlights. So China continues to lead the world in solar, solar PV panel capacity additions with 100 gigawatt added in 2022, make, marking an almost 60% increase compared to 2021. So the 14th five-year plan for renewable energy released in 20, 2022 sets ambitious targets for further deployment, ensuring continued growth in the coming years. Another area or region is also the European Union. So the EU is rapidly expanding solar PV deployment, adding 38 gigawatts in 2022, which is a 50% increase compared to 2021. So policies like the RE Power EU plan and the Green Deal Industrial Plan are expected to drive significant investment in solar PV in the near future. In the United States, the Inflation Reduction Act, known as the IRA, introduced in 2022 provides new funding for solar PV, including investment and production tax credits, which are expected to significantly boost capacity and expand the solar PV supply chain. India, on the other hand, they installed 18 gigawatt of solar PV in 2022, reflecting an almost 40% increase over 2021. A new target to auction 40 gigawatt of PV capacity annually, along with the development of a dy dynamic domestic supply chain which, likely, which would likely accelerate the growth even further. So we can see that India is also taking solar PV panel technology very seriously. Then we have Brazil, which doubled its solar PV capacity in 2022, adding almost 11 gigawatts. And the deployment is expected to remain strong in the medium term due to the consistent demand for renewable energy from the industry and the electricity retailers. So also Brazil is one of the countries that are important for solar PV growth. So this graph projects the projected solar PV power generation under the net zero scenario from 2015 to 2030. It shows a steady increase in generation capacity with significant growth expected post-2024. So by 2030, the solar PV generation is projected to surge dramatically, reflecting the increasing emphasis on renewable energy to meet global net zero targets. So this highlights the solar energy's crucial role in the future electricity generation. This one also talks about the projected solar PV manufacturing capacity from 2015 to 2030. So this is talking about the, the manufacturing of the panels itself. We can see that the tracks, it tracks the capacity for polysilicon, wafers, cells, and modules showing steady growth in manufacturing up until 2022, following, followed by a sharp increase in capacity with announced projects. By 2030, the capacity is expected to rise significantly, keeping, uh, keeping the pace with the rising solar PV demand. So we can see that both the manufacturing and the demand for solar PV technology is also on the rise. So let's talk about solar PV in the private sector before we end this uh, lecture. So solar PV is actually the main renewable energy technology of choice in the private sector compared to the other types like wind, for example, or um, wind, nuclear, uh, biomass, and so on. So the private sector main activity in the solar PV deployment can be divided into two categories. So first, companies investing in distributed uh, solar PV installations, including the rooftop on their own buildings and premises. This is responsible for 26% of total installed PV capacity as of 2022. Then we have companies entering into the corporate power purchase agreements, which are known as the PPAs, signing direct contracts with solar PV plant operators for the purchase of generated electricity. The solar PV plants dominate renewables PPAs with a share of almost 70 in 2022. So we can see that solar PV technology is of great interest in the private sector compared to the other technologies. All right, so let's conclude everything quickly. So solar PV has become one of the most important renewable energy sources, contributing to a significant portion of global renewable energy capacity additions, its scalability, cost effectiveness and sustainability makes it a corner store of the global energy transition. So countries like China, the EU, the US, India and Brazil are leading their way in solar PV deployment, supported by ambitious policies and technological advances. So it's important to note that these, these policies are very important for solar PV growth. 
There's also new targets and funding initiatives uh, in these countries and other countries as well, which will drive even greater solar PV capacity growth in the coming years, reinforcing its role in reducing reliance on fossil fuels and combating climate change. So as costs continue to decline and policies continue to support renewable energy, solar PV capacity is expected to grow more than double by 2028. So this is showing that this technology is going to increase significantly in the coming years. So solar PV is not only an essential tool for meeting today's energy needs, but is also a critical part of a sustainable energy future. With the continuous support of innovative policies and global cooperation, solar PV will play an ever-growing role in the worldwide transition to clean energy. All right, so with that, uh, we move on to the quick exercise. So I invite everyone to be proactive and you know contribute to this one. Don't worry if the answer is wrong or not. The point is to refresh our memory and to gain knowledge as much as possible. So this brings me to the first question, which is, what is the main function of a solar PV or a solar panel, for example? So is it A, to convert heat into electricity, B, store electricity for future use, C, convert sunlight into electricity, or D, generate electricity from wind? Make, make your game, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for you to uh, get involved, like uh, Abdul Kader uh, indicated. It's, uh, it's not nece necessary that your answers be accurate, correct. As long as you uh, get involved and participate, that is uh, the point. So far, the answers coming up on the uh, chat box are C, uh, convert sunlight into electricity. Uh, what's your, what's your follow-up, uh, Abdul Kader? All right, so we can see that most of the, the answers I'm seeing are, okay, C and A. So we have, uh, we have a dispute between C and A, but mostly our Cs. Yes. So, all right, maybe just give it a few more seconds if anyone else wants to contribute. So are we, is it C or A? What, what are you saying, guys? <laughs> Pretty much like you read, uh, most of the answers are C uh, okay. in our chat line. All right. So, yes, uh, you are right. So, the answer is C. So, it converts sunlight into electricity. Uh, so, this is the main point of solar PV technology. So, we're using solar energy. So, we're using sunlight to convert it into electricity with the help of the panels, which convert uh, which with the flow of electrons are able to produce DC electricity, which is later converted with the help of an inverter, of course, to AC, which is used for buildings and so on. All right, great. Thank you for your contribution. Let's keep the same energy for the remaining questions. All right, so the second question is, which type of solar PV system is connected to the electricity grid and can send excess power to it? So we've discussed different type of systems today uh, and which one is the type that is connected to electricity grid and can send excess power to it? So is it A, is it off-grid system? Or is it B, the grid-tight system? Or is it C, the hybrid system? Or is it finally D, the PIPV system, which is the building integrated photovoltaic system? So it's important to know the different type of systems because this will help you know which type of system is the important is the one that you would like to implement in your case scenario. Okay, I see a D.
Okay, what are the answers are you seeing? So, so far I see a C and an A, a D. Okay, so the answer for this question is B. So it's a grid tight system. So this is the most, or the, you could say the most famous or the first system that we talked about, which is the grid tight system. So it's connected directly to the electricity grid without being connected to any, bat to any battery, for example, which is the other type of systems. All right, the third question is, what is the key advantage of monocrystalline solar panels? Is it A, the high efficiency, or is it the low cost? Is it the flexibility, or is it the low temperature sensitivity? Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Some answers. Uh, multiple A's so far. Uh, thank you, Adama, Ismael, uh, Marta, Jima, uh, Beverly. Uh, who else wants to uh, participate? Uh, Jeanette, you land. Uh, all these answers are A's. Uh, wow, there is a B now for, from Pundu. Uh, Caleb also believes it's an A. Is the A option. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for your participation. Uh, Geronima, you may uh, put your hand down for the time being as we will get later on into the uh, uh, segment for uh, specific questions. But for the time being, right now, uh, we are trying to answer the questions displayed by our participant, uh, uh, by our expert, our guru in that field, Abdul Kader Mohammed Alawi Sal. Yeah, don't worry. We will have uh, more than plenty time to discuss any questions. Um, you would just like your interaction to maybe reinforce some of the information we learned through these questions. So as you say, most of the answers are going for A. And uh, yes, so most of you are correct. And no worries if you got the answer wrong. So let me just refresh your memory. So the monocrystalline panel is the first type uh, that we talked about, which is the most efficient one. However, it's worth noting that because of its high efficiency, the manufacturing process is expensive which means that they're also expensive uh, as a panel compared to others. All right, moving on to the third, fourth question, which type of solar PV system includes battery storage but remains connected to the grid for backup? So is it A, the grid type system? We just talked about it, so definitely not A. Or is it B, the hybrid system? C, the off-grid system? And finally, D, the PIPV system? Reminding you, ladies and gentlemen, you are with Atlantic International University with that uh, presentation by Abdul Kader Mohamed Alawi Sahel on the topic of uh, renewable uh, energy, uh, harnessing solar power technology, I mean, solar power uh, technologies, uh, renewable energy. Geonimo da Silva, remember, we will get to the questions uh, later on, uh, please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, do not raise your hands at this time. Just go to the chat box to uh, input uh, your uh, responses. We will get to the questions later. 
like uh, our specialist just pointed out. All right, so what are the answers that we're seeing in chat? So let's see what everyone thinks. So we have Bs, Bs, we have a C and an A. We can see that mostly are Bs. So yes, you're right. The answer is indeed B. So it's a hybrid system. The hybrid system is a system where uh, you can connect, where it's connected to both the grid and also the battery. So let's say uh, the grid goes off, you have the battery to use. Uh, let's say the battery is full, you can send it to the grid. So it's very versatile as it's combining the best of both worlds. But of course, it's not a very easy system. You need to carefully build it and it's also expensive as you would need the batteries. Lastly, the final question, and then we'll go straight away to the Q&A. So what is the one challenge commonly associated with off-grid solar PV systems? So we're talking here about off-grid PV systems. So we, this is important to know. So what are the common challenge that we usually, that we talked about for it? If I were to give you a little hint, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the question is about uh, what is no good when you use enough grid solar PV system? Uh, what doesn't work well? What kind of problems do we encounter by using that system? So give Zuzi, that is D, same thing from Ismael Adebola, uh, Marta, Hodumu, Tomki Sembo, all of them are choosing the option D. Uh, 